Who are the most important Sixers on the 2022-23 roster? Today, we are breaking down our seventh most important Sixers, expectations for this season, and more on the latest Party on Broad. is happening guys welcome to party on broad guys if you're new to the channel smash that subscribe button hit the like button if you're watching us live please be sure to comment and let's jump right in my man austin over there one of the best sixers followers period is joining me as always at nba crow on twitter go give him a follow what's up austin going on dives it's always a pleasure love it love it so here we go so we are on number seven just a quick recap Austin had George Niang at 10, Matisse Thibault at 9, Paul Reed at 8. I had Isaiah Joe at 10, Daniel House Jr. at 9, and Matisse Thibault at 8. So, Austin, who is your seventh most important sixer to the 2022-23 season? For me, it is none other than Daniel House Jr. Uh, he has the biannual exception that the Sixers will not have again until... Not 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 next off season, but the following off season. So uh, he's carrying some meaningful money for them. That means there are you know there are expectations for him. Uh, Average five point nine points, two point six rebounds uh, for the Jazz last season. Um, he's somebody who has functioned quite well for his career next to James Harden. So I think it's a sensible signing in that regard. Um, I don't know that. I believe he is inherently important by himself because I think he's a replacement level player. What I do think is important is that he plays better next to the likes of James Harden. There is historical data that says that. So I, I think he's important as a, you know, in, in tandem with James Harden. Um, your thoughts on uh, well, I guess you are you already have your thoughts on, on Daniel House. You shared them in a previous video. I like Daniel House a lot, man. I think he's an underrated signing uh, for the Sixers this off season. I mean, he's a guy that I've liked for a long time, and I'm happy to see him come to Philly. Um, but like my take, and you know, I I look at my rankings. I had Matisse Thybulle over Daniel House Jr. But when we did our like you know rotation show just a few days ago, I had Daniel House Jr. getting more minutes than Matisse Thibel. Like, what's your, like, minute projection for Daniel House Jr.? Because when I look at mine, I'm, like, in that somewhere around 20 to 23 minutes per game for Daniel House. What's your thoughts? I kind of envision him in the James Ennis role. Like, yeah. like 18 to 22 minutes a game. Um, you know, it, I, I think it's going to be a, largely a function of how well he shoots – off of James Harden's fat passes, like Daniel House is going to have an opportunity to space the floor, move freely within motion offense, um, relocate to different shots and off screens, and, and 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 as the ball flows from from the empty side to the strong side, um, you know they're going to have a lot of opportunity there uh, for him to get up shots. So, you know, uh, I think really. It's a huge uh, opportunity for him, and if he shoot and if he shoots the ball thirty seven percent or better from three, he's going to get a lot of minutes. Uh, certainly, he's going to outplay Matisse Thybulle if Thybulle can't shoot. Uh, yeah. Last season with the Jazz, he shot forty two percent from three, seventy four percent at the rim in about five hundred, a little less than five hundred minutes. Um, Eighty seven percent of his shots came between the rim and the three point line. So he's like an analytical darling, right? Uh, really good shot value. He gets right to the rim for high value, for, for easy high value shots. 
or he takes threes, which is a maximum point yeah. down shot. So he's efficient. He takes analytically valuable shots. Um, he's a darling in that regard. Uh, he also had a block percentage of 1.3 last year, uh, which is 94th percentile for wings. So a, a, a stout, uh, credible defender on the perimeter. Um, and he has a track record, again, like I said, and I think just getting as many pieces next to James Harden, who James Harden is comfortable with, is so critical to unlocking what he can be at his best. Because if James Harden is functioning at his best, you already know what you have in Joel and then, you know, Tobias, you think you know what you have in Tyrese. So the the, the one variable that if you, can, if you can maximize that is James. And if he's playing at his best, this team is going to go really far. Yeah, I, I like Daniel House Jr. Mo I mostly like Daniel House Jr. and his switchability. I think he's gonna. there's going to be a lot of different lineup combinations that Daniel House Jr. will be able to get on the court off that bench uh, and play with James Harden off that second unit. I'm really excited for Daniel House. We have I Love Weed in the house saying, what up, Crockpot? Go Cowboys. Get out of here. Get out of here with that Cowboys nonsense. Um, so, yeah, I, I fully agree. Uh, and, you know, you talk about defensively you touched on it he held opponents of 38 percent shooting from three last year uh from the field overall so um there's a lot there's definitely a lot of kind of positive vibes i have with daniel house jr and his impact in 2023 i'm gonna start off with my dude and he is the anthony melton uh for me uh i'm really excited about the anthony melton uh he shot 40 plus percent in the catch and shoot last season nearly 50 percent austin from three in the corners uh he's a he's a plus defender uh, i think that's the biggest thing he had 4.5 deflections per 36 minutes last year um for uh perspective matisse Thibel had 5.3 deflections per 36 so he's just under that mark uh so uh he had the second highest steal percentage in the nba last year um and when he was with the grizzlies the dude was a positive positive on the court a 5.6 net rating last year and over the last four seasons the anthony melton's a plus 16 with the grizz so and he was a 4.6 net when sharing the court with john moran so there's a lot of really intriguing things that the anthony melton uh brings to the bench but also in different lineup combinations with joel Embiid and james harden and uh, i would not be shocked at all to see D'Anthony Melton play like 23 to 26 minutes per game. We all know that Sixers bench was horrible. Uh, they were dead last in points per game in the playoffs at the bench. And I would, I, I, you know, I just vividly remember watching teams like the Heat or uh, in the, especially in the playoffs that are just rotating wing after wing after wing, athlete after athlete. And the Sixers had none of that. Danny Green goes down. There was no response. There was nothing they had personnel wise I'm, i guess shake but come on this is definitely a, a huge step up from shake uh so i think the anthony melton is for real i think it was a great trade um and probably we don't talk enough about that addition am i am i going too overboard on the anthony melton Austin? no i actually have him higher uh the, obviously i have him higher because he isn't on my list yet uh but I, I i don't remember the last time the sixers had a a guard that could vertically space the way that DeAnthony Melton can like just get up, um, you know, and, and rise above everybody. And, you know, that really is huge to have that as a, at a position where you're required to do more slashing and catching on the weak side, attacking a closeout and then detonating at the rim. And I think, you know, having a guy that can do that, but also not be so confined to that skill set because he can't shoot like the Anthony Melton is, is, is an improving shooter. He has a he still has some room. He still has a lot of room to grow, obviously, but uh, a really capable shooter. He's gotten better from the corners. Um, I really like everything that, you know, uh, that, that, that he can bring to this team. Um, it's really going to be a matter of how does it hold in the playoffs and, um, you know, can he sustain that shooting for extended periods of time or is he going to be hot and cold? Uh, and then when he's hot and cold, is he going to be somebody who can't play that much when he's cold? Yeah. 
Uh, John's in the house. What's going on, John? Says Melton is a guard, not a wing. I agree. Uh, I, I do think I again. Think I think he. I think when you're six two at the six eight wing, you can the six eight wingspan, you can play across three positions. Yeah, he's definitely going to be able to defend one through three, uh, depending on matchups. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, so yeah, the Anthony Melton man. What, how many minutes do you think he he gets? What's your like quick buy? I, I'm in that like mid twenties. Is that is that reasonable? I think we're at twenty two to twenty eight. Okay, sounds good. So split a different twenty five. Okay, twenty five it is. Um, John says twenty four minutes per game for Jantin Mouse. So we're all on the same kind of wavelength. Uh, I think it's going to have a huge impact uh, on this team. Um, I can't wait to see this guy play. I think it's going to be a fan favorite too, Austin. I think people are going to love DeAnthony Melton in many respects. Um, that basically wraps up our number seven. Any other final thoughts on our number seven here, Austin? That's all I got, Dives. <laughs> all right. So that concludes our number seven most important Philadelphia 76ers to next season. Uh, stay tuned for our number six. Guys, please be sure to smash that like button. Uh, help us out. Uh, and be on the lookout for our next show. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll be doing an Eagles preseason preview. That will be at 9 o'clock. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, it is a crossover show with uh, my guy, Dylan. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, Austin, do you want to plug anything? Um, NBA content is starting to ramp back up soon. So uh, be on the lookout for some articles diving into some questions heading into the new season training camp starts i think next month and uh the schedule should be coming out in the next two weeks love it love it love it follow my man austin on twitter at nba crow you'll thank me later uh wow john says daniel house is going to start I, I definitely think there's potential for that like here and there depending on like <laughs> injuries or got covid or who knows what but that's a take. I'm not, I'm not gonna be as pleasant as you are. There, he's not starting. He's not, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not happening. It's not. Yeah, um, it's, it's gonna. It's. I'm almost certain that it will be James, Tyrese, uh, Tobias, PJ, and Joel. Obviously, this is where I was. My next question: Who would you start if you had the choice, though? House or Thibel? House. Yeah, I'm. I'm right there with you, man. Uh, like you said, you know, over six three-point attempts per 36 minutes, like over the last couple seasons, man. Daniel House Jr. is a great fit for this roster. And I know the Sixers are going to want to jack up more threes this season. Um, so, again, thank you, everyone, for watching. We will see you on the next show. My man, Austin, over there at NBA Crow. I am Dives, Mr. Crockpot. Stay awesome.